Today we're going to be walking through the common parts of the server stack app host, what it is, how it works, its function in your application architecture, and the different ways you can configure it. The app host is where you configure your server stack application and everything it needs to operate the services it hosts. This configuration is generally done through five different mechanisms. The assembly locations of your service stack services you want to host, the host-wide configuration options through the host config class, the loading of the environment-specific app settings from different sources, the IOC container which manages all of the injected dependencies required by your hosted services, and plugins which are a common way to wrap up generic functionality and features for service stack hosts to reuse. Looking at the recommended physical structure of a service stack application, we can see the app host is designed to be at the top of the dependency tree. By design, it references everything and nothing references it, which as a goal should be kept logic free. We want to make our app host process load and configure all the different parts it needs while keeping that process deterministic and as simple as possible. App hosts are flexible and can be used in different ways. You could have many unique app hosts that combine different groups of services all configured differently. The services know nothing of the host, so each app host needs to be configured with the specific services in mind to meet all their required dependencies and configuration needs. This enables a level of composability among your services and a clean separation of concerns between the host and the services themselves. This approach remains flexible as your project grows, allowing you to split up or group your services and host your services in a way that suits your needs. Be it a monolithic app host or set of microservices, each with their own app host, the clean service boundary and separation of host configuration and service functionality means that whichever approach you take, the responsibilities of the app host are well defined. This can also be seen in the templated test project, which itself should be considered another type of host project. For integration tests, a separate test app host should be used to test specific services. A test project app host and a single host project app host will likely contain similar elements due to hosting the same services, which in turn have the same dependency requirements, but keeping them separate is important for test isolation. For example, this separation allows you to register specific mock dependencies into your IOC based on what functionality is being tested and what functionality you want to ignore or stub out for each set of tests. Let's start with the standard web templated server stack project and walk through the code of each of these configuration types of an app host. First up, specifying which services your app host should be hosting is commonly done by providing the assemblies of your service interface project to your app host based constructor. Service Stack uses these assemblies and scans for classes that inherit from the service base class or that implement the iService interface directly. Now that your services are registered, you might want to specify some non standard behavior of your app host across the whole host using host config. The host config comes with a series of default configuration, which we think will suit a lot of web service API projects, but they are there so you can configure application wide settings like allow file extensions, global response headers, and default documents, just to name a few. These settings should only be set using the set config function in the app host configure overridden method. Then there is app settings or iApp settings, which is a pluggable way to store your application structure configuration while providing a high level way to read several sources. By default, Netcore templates use the Netcore app settings, which is initialized with the ASP.NET environment so you can manage a development and production copy of the provided app settings.json. Netcore app settings will also read configuration from environment variables, allowing you to quickly swap options using the ASP.NET launch settings.json under the properties directory. You could also build your own or use the other provided app setting implementations, as well as combine them together with the multi app settings provider. This lets you control your configuration per environment in a variety of ways, including building up those settings from multiple sources with fallbacks. Things like connection strings, third party integration configuration, and anything else you need to control on an environment by environment basis while still being available in a central location for your application and related services. Check out docs.servicestack.net slash app settings for more information about specific implementations and options. IApp settings are auto wired into your services like any other IOC dependency to make it easy to access required configuration at runtime. Which leads us to the IOC container itself as the primary way to share code dependencies between services, where the app host registers and configures them. 
Registration is done by type. For example, using container.register and passing an instance of your MyProvider dependency, it will need to be resolved by the MyProvider concrete type, and it will also be registered as a singleton by default. A common pattern is to register your dependencies against an interface your dependency implements. This will resolve the dependency by the interface, allowing for easy swapping implementations for situations like testing. Factory methods are also easy to register in the IOC by passing a function instance with the container as the first argument. This factory will be invoked when resolving an instance of the dependency. This combined with reuse scopes of container, request or none gives you control of your dependencies and how they should be used, all isolated to your specific app host. This default IOC container also supports .NET Core compatible registration APIs, giving you a consistent way across your application to register .NET Core IOC dependencies. Resolving dependencies in your application will also pull from .NET Core's built-in IOC, making it easy to move your registrations between Service Stack and .NET Core directly. And if you need more control still, you can provide your own iContainer adapter, and this has been done to enable popular IOC solutions such as Ninject, StructureMap, Windsor, AutoFact, and others. Check out our documentation for the full list including more advanced examples and options. And lastly, there's ServiceStack plugins. ServiceStack has a lot of built-in features you can enable in your app host, and the most common way to do this is using feature plugins. For example, if you want to enable the validation functionality that comes with ServiceStack, you can use the following code, which just provides an instance of the validation feature with the associated code-first configuration. Each plugin implements the iPlugin interface and wraps functionality that can interact with the app host, including registering services, filters, serializers, and various other types of features, all grouped together as something that is easy to plug in as generic functionality to any app host. The iPlugin interface can also be used to wrap up your own functionality and services to share between your app hosts. Summing up, your app host is all about configuration for your application and hosted services. They are the central point of control for your hosted application and make the hosting of your services flexible and composable. There are a lot of options when it comes to configuring your application, so check out docs.servicedac.net for more specific information. I hope this video has been useful and thanks for watching.